Hello, people. So, <laughs> okay. This is going to be probably the hardest video I have actually made. Um, I'm actually recording it and not live streaming. And I've got music in the background. I hope it's not being heard. And it shouldn't be. But um, I need to have something to listen to. So, this is to do with my body motion unit that I came up with the idea about two years ago, or a bit over two years, I think. And basically, um, due to COVID, <laughs> I have not been able to make a video. And it's something I need to do, but I actually do need to have um, someone help me with it. As I would now, <laughs> but there's no one here. So I've decided at long last, I'm gonna have to try and make it myself. So you're gonna have to excuse me. Um, if you see me, I keep looking over there because that's on that screen is where OBS is. And um, therefore it's, I feel ignorant if I'm not looking directly at the camera, but I do need to watch what I'm doing. Um, so you're gonna have to excuse me on that one. Very sorry. Also, another disclaimer, I'm going through my second bout of COVID. So I've got the snivels, I've got the bad throat. It's not the smoking, believe me. Uh, I've really not had a, a night's sleep in the last week. But besides that, so you'll have to excuse me if I cough and I have to blow my nose. Uh, it kind of goes with COVID, I think. I've used so much toilet paper, it's unbelievable. Um, right, so, I'm slightly off center because I'm gonna have to minimize myself in order to be able to demonstrate what the body motion unit is about. And um, I'm gonna have to play around with the cameras a bit. And I haven't actually rehearsed it, I haven't choreographed it, I just know in my head what I want to do I'm just going to try and do it. Uh, I always, um, yeah, I don't write down. I think it out, choreograph it in my head, but basically I'll wing it. So please excuse um, if there's delays in certain things. And I, I know this is going to be kind of boring for many people, but it's technical. It's something that has to be explained. So, body motion unit. What is it? It's basically, yeah, I've got to remember, I've only got, so this is the sender. This, <laughs> I actually need to explain why I'm doing this, is a unit that sits on your chest. This is a receiver unit that is plugged into my Leo Bodner boards on one of my control systems. So the whole point behind this is, oh, I think I've got a game pad somewhere, I'll put it. Right, so in a motorcycle game, basically what you're doing is when you're riding the bike, it gives you the option for rider control in some games. Now I'm, I'm, I'm a GP bikes person, it's a real simulator. Everything that I build and design is based on GP bikes. But I do make it so they <coughs> can eventually, excuse me, <coughs> be used on milestone games and Isle of Man TT, Ride on the Edge 2 and everything else. But for body movement, normally, you're using the right thumbstick. Now, obviously, it's reversed <laughs> in the video um, because the camera's in front of me. But the right stick is normally what I think people use for body motion. I don't use this. I can't. I cannot use this damn thing. It's just not real for me. Anyhow, 
because that is what you use to control the rider so that you've got your lean affecting the bike's handling. I can't do it because I don't use a controller and my handlebar system doesn't have thumbsticks. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> I'm trying to make a video with COVID is not really a good, good idea. Um, anyhow, so because I wanted to have that control and I know I do VR and you can let your VR unit kind of control your body, it's not the same thing. I want the VR headset to control my head. That's my head looking, not my body. And it shouldn't be affecting the bike. Just turning my head is not really going to affect the bike that much. Well, at all. But when I move my body, it does. So I want to be able to have control of the bike through my controller, control of my head through VR, and then control of my body through my body motion unit. To do that, I don't want to have two separate controls. I don't want to have my handlebars and the body motion unit. So I want the body motion unit to not be where you're using a thumb pad, I want it to be, I use my body. If I lean backwards, forwards, left, right, I can, but I run out of analog ports. I can do twists as well. So I can do your, but I don't bother with it. Doesn't affect the bike anyhow. Um, so I make it that my body motion unit plugs into the control board for my handlebars and foot controls. So everything's in one unit, it's one USB connector to the computer. But there is no cable connection from the handlebars to my body, it's wireless. And um, I'll explain a bit more in a, a second, but that's the concept. I don't want to have a cable from my body to the bars. I don't want to use buttons or joy pads or anything to control my body in game. I want to use my body. And I only want one connector. So, and that's what I have. So I was trying to find a way to do that. <coughs> and I stumbled across a Canadian, Martin Cope, and he builds controllers for drone cameras. So I looked at the idea and there's a difference in controlling servos, other things. I need to explain what the concept is. So I've taken drone technology and Martin and I have redesigned it. Uh, and now it works as a USB input, but there's, there's a lot more involved because there's voltages, there's lots of differences. The base of my system could now be used with a, a Leo Bodner board or a Duido or anything that has a standard analog input for like a potentiometer. It can be used exactly the same. Um, as I said, basically you, you've got two components. You've got, and I've got to remember about the cameras on this. You've got your receiver that is mounted on the handlebars and plugged into the control board. And then the body motion unit itself, the sender that goes on the chest harness on your body. And ah, we have one where I've uh, got to hold it the right way. 3D printed a plate. And when it goes on your chest, you can adjust it to where you're sitting so that you can adjust exactly how you're sitting on the bike because you're not sitting upright when you're, you've are you got your hands on the bars. <coughs> so it's all fully adjustable, fully analog. Um, Martin worked really hard for me and we've even got it that <laughs> if it came to a point, we could have 50 people in one room 
and they'd all be on a different frequency that would not interrupt any of the others. So we could actually have like a mass writing meeting of 50 people and all of them could have a unit and it would not interfere with another one. So we've made sure that there are the capabilities for if we get it to sell in such a way, there won't be complications. And that as long as you know your frequency, you'll be fine. Um, other things, we're just trying to get through the, the basics to start with. Um, it is actually complicated because if um, someone wanted one, so like on say my, my handlebars, because the Leo Bodner board is so small, it has to be hardwired to start with. And there's a small cable and those three connectors go into the board. Now two are for the axis and one is for power. We do have some slight problems with the power. <coughs> or rather, not the power, but connection. What it boils down to is once connected, um, works fine. But if you were to disconnect it or to turn it off, um, it would upset the calibration in Windows. So there's a method to using the system. And it's simple, yet a little bit tricky. Um, and it takes a bit of finesse to connect and disconnect. You don't want to be a brute and be pulling wires out and shoving wires in. You want to be careful. That's what this video is about. Like I say, it's going to bore the hell out of most people. I'm already boring myself. Um, but it is something that has to be shown and until we we can come up with a, a resolution for it it's the best i've got but i'm proud of it um and yes this is my anti-cough my throat is really really bad and yeah i know you can say oh you've got covid so you're smoking well um with nerves, no lack of sleep and everything, I, I just takes the edge off. So yeah, I'm bad, I'm having a cigarette. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm really gonna start with this. Um, like I said, this is not something that I could just do because normally I'd, I'd have someone with me and we'd try and go through it together. We figure something out but this is something where I've got to really do it on the fly so you've got your base board the sender unit and then a 3d printer housing when it's facing away from you so what you're seeing is the front you have your USB input for charging um, on the full charge it will last about 10 hours and it takes a couple of hours to charge. Then you have on the right side, you've got a button and a little LED kind of window. In fact, the LED is right down here. And what I've done is I've, I've put a, a tube of plastic. So what you do to turn it on is press it down, hold it, it'll flash. It's now on. And then when you want to turn it off, you hold it again, flash a couple of times, turn off, and that's it. When you plug it in, it will flash one flash slowly to show it's charging. And then when it does two quick flashes, it's fully charged. So it's very simple. So you have to remember, and you have to just remember, button at the right, facing away from you. That's that point. Then the receiver is mounted on the handlebars. I'll show you this in a second. It comes in a little housing, which I should really put my glasses on to do this because <laughs> I'm as blind as a bat. But 
Come on. The housing then goes to put it together like that. Now, this is the important point. This cable here, um, trying to do it so you can see it, not against black. Um, right, if I put it in my face, you see that there is one, that's a two pin plug there, and that's a six pin plug. Now this can only be plugged in one way on this. So this is gonna be fun. This is the bit I've been dreading. So, uh, right. You've got the six pins, then the two pin. So I have to put this, maybe you can see it against my collar. It has to go. You gotta remember I'm, I'm working, looking at the camera. It sits like that and then wobble it down gently. Okay, it's in, that is connected. So that would be hard mounted on the system. The cable, when it comes to you, will be disconnected. So you can set up the system and learn it to start with. And then once you learn the system, move on to using this. That is my theory. Um, yeah, that's the theory of it. <laughs> but you have to very gently wobble it to take it off. But it can only go in one way. So that's the basics. So if you're not gonna to wanna to use the body motion unit, you le before you plug the whole system into a computer, you disconnect this. That's my theory of it. Well, that's the way actually the Leo bot on the board works. So I hope you can understand that function of connection and disconnection. So now, <laughs> I'm gonna to have to demonstrate doing it. That's actually gonna be quite difficult, but I'm, I'm hoping because you've seen this process, I'm not gonna be able to really show you me doing it on a set of handlebars because it's so blocked in it's harder to do in front of the camera because I have to stand up and do it and I'm, I need to put the bars on my legs. So I'll do my best. Right, first off, uh, need to move these so they do not get damaged. I have to excuse me, but I do want to ensure that this is statically protected. You can never be too cautious. Basically, ah, I do need that piece of paper. <laughs> you see, I have to calibrate that box and that's where it can be a bit of fun. Like I said, this is not easy to do. And I'm sure I've bored everyone to death already, but it's technical and you're gonna need to know these facts. If at any point someone purchases one. Right. First of all, I'm gonna to have to put a set of handlebars on here. So I have, this is my test unit that allows me to, basically, I can do alterations because it's not painted, so if I, come up with a blisteringly brilliant idea, 
I can alter it and don't have to worry about paint and everything else. And it never goes outside so it doesn't exactly rust. It's high quality mild steel but right. The other day, well yesterday when I was doing the Isle of Man, I didn't tighten this up. This is only like, this is one of those entertainment centers that you put your TV on with a glass top. I literally, that's what I use. <laughs> Just as a test area so I can sit in front of it and it doesn't look horrible. Um, right, so that's that. Right, need to move my couch back. So I'm going to try and show this box here, this our box, goes on the back of the unit. So this is that cable, you can see, so we've got that cable which then plugs into, uh, working back front, into there, which I am now gonna do. Uh, right, I'll bloody hold it right. No, nope, that's slightly off. Well, I said, you literally, I need to put my bloody glasses on. Slightly down. It's only because I don't have my glasses on. It's actually, I can hardly, it's so out of focus for me. Right, she's on. I think, I can't remember which is the on position, bloody hell. But there's a button anyhow <laughs> that you could turn it on and off, but we, we're having a problem with it. So for now, you don't worry about it, you just leave it on. But I can't remember if I left it on or I left it off. I think I left it on. Um, right. So, these now. So basically all I've done is connect that wire. Okay, let's just slide it down. I have an Allen key here somewhere. See, under there, I've got all my... <laughs> Everyone else has got a normal house. My so-called coffee table has tools and... Oh, all kinds of stuff on it. But I love it. Right. You got me bars. So, you've got to have that plugged in. And the important thing is, before you plug the handlebars, you could, if you've got foot controls, you plug the foot controls in to the handlebars because they're going to the main board. Then you turn on the body motion unit with the button. Um, and then you plug it into the computer. Now my computer's like eight foot away, but I've got extensions and whatever. So it's pretty cool actually. All right, I need foot controls. <coughs> so. in first right they're in so now I've got me body motion unit now I'm gonna have to switch around in the cams because I'm gonna need to show how to calibrate this and yeah it's gonna be I use it my way I move a certain amount and it's like I've got my sit on system over there I've got desktop here but if someone had say their own system 
and they wanted to use it, but they might move differently. They do a different calibration amount. I'll show it and you'll understand. It's pretty easy. Right, so let's go on there. Uh, that pen, that. So I'm gonna go really small up there. Got it right. Ah. Right, so <laughs> I'm about to get very much smaller. I'm up here. And I now need to, hopefully this camera will turn on and be working. There's a reason why it's that size. And uh, that is because when I do the next stage, I now need to turn this on. So now this is on. I'm now gonna plug my control system into my computer. I can find a, I've got a hub down here that's got an 8 foot extension on it, so. <laughs> okay, she's connected. And now. I need to open the X360. I need to start up the screen. Not that one. That one. And move this over here. All right. And ensure all my axes are working. Okay. So that's basics. Unfortunately, right at the moment, everything is functioning except with the body motion unit because it has not been calibrated into Windows. So we very, very first thing I'm gonna to have to do is calibrate it in Windows. See, I'm, I'm kind of losing myself in many respects. So that's how we're gonna be. But first off, we have to Oh, Joy CPL up here. Unfortunately, this is one program that for some reason, Windows, it's because I'm in 4K, you, and you have a program, you can make it that it will expand to a certain amount more, which for me is, uh, I think, 250% larger because you're in 4k but I can't get this to actually do it so it's going to be very small now I'm supposed to have slider and dial but I don't so I'll make sure I've got this so now I have to recalibrate the whole system and this is where it gets to be fun so you go to settings Reset the default and then calibrate. Hit next. Now, handlebars are X. What I'll do is I'll just click on this. You don't have to do that. Handlebars are X. So you, you move what you've got. Now, body motion unit is the Y. And that's for your front back lean. So what I do, I take a normal bar row, I'm using this as an example for now, it'll be something that you'll want to experiment with yourself as to how much you use. Now, the less amount of movement you make, the more sensitive the body motion unit will be. The more movement you make, the less sensitive. So, I'm going to basically use a pen and I'm going to Spin the, I'm going to lift it up at the front, put the pen underneath. Then I'm going to lift it up at the back until the pen slides underneath. And that should 
basically to sort it out. Yeah. Okay, I'm not getting movement on my... It's not working. <laughs> okay, I don't think it's recognized. That is weird. I think... Oh, you know why? I might not have had it on. Yeah, I didn't have it on. Ah! I had the uh, button the wrong way round, I think. Calibrate. Next. Okay, no, I made a mistake. What I did, and what I'm going to do now is disconnect it again. I didn't have it turned on. This is where, I remember I said to you that I wasn't sure if that button was on or not. Um, okay, you see now we've got it, but it's totally over the wrong place. Dial is, okay, Z rotation, that's correct, and that's my Y. Okay, and dial is my rear brake. Okay, I upset the cut, the apple cart. <laughs> I didn't actually turn it on. I turned the receiver off. So, forget everything up until now about calibration. Now we're starting real calibration. Okay, so, once again, you see the one thing I've learned about COVID is also doesn't leave you with a clear head. I mean, I've had such a little sleep. Oh, right. So we got our left, right. That's the lean of our bike. We're not turning the handlebars. We're leaning the bike. We're going with the lean. It's the misconception of many people. Now I'm going to take my pen. And I'm going to lift my Y up. And down. Uh, I don't think that was enough. That's not normally right. I might have to reset that again. I think she's gotta remember the follow through first, so throttle clutch. is rotation Z. Ah, that's you. Maybe I do need to go a little bit more. Uh, it's actually doing it. Oh! I didn't do my foot brake. <laughs> okay, I've upset something somewhere. Oh, I didn't hit reset to default, did I? See, even I have to consider what I'm doing. Right, right so I'm going to do that. It needs just a little bit more of that. We're going to see. Like I said, you've got to really play with oh, what 
I think I missed the seed, didn't I? I've got a problem with the program. I don't know why it's doing this. Cancel it. Cancel, there's something wrong. I think it's because I upset it by turning that on and off. No, oh, disconnected totally. I don't think I disconnected the whole system, that was the problem. Let's hope so, because I have not had this problem before. Try it with a bit more. No, that's the wrong way. For some reason, oh, it's because the X. That is really not doing what it should do. are not activating like it. Right, I'm going to do it a bit more. Dial. Rear brake. It's actually in the centre, but I've got to lean a lot. Yeah, so it was just I, where I didn't have it on. So you can see my Z rotation is lean left, right. And then lean forward, lean back. But I have got those uh, quite bad. It is the amount that you do it. But what had happened is I didn't turn the receiver on plugged it in and then when I had it plugged in I turned it on and it kind of upset windows so yeah um, where is that button <laughs> oh I don't want to touch it ah so you push the button so it goes towards the center of the unit not the outside, All right? <laughs> well, you'll know because there's a blue light on the unit when it lights. So there's the same kind of blue as there is on the actual body motion unit itself. So now we've got that actually calibrated after me doing a whole kerfuffle about it. But you can see it's it is simple, but if you do it in the wrong way, like don't turn it on, then try turning it on when it's plugged in, bad. Um, unplug it from the computer, turn it on, then plug it in. And the blue light should be on. If the blue light's off, unplug it from the computer, push the switch, because you might not have pushed it enough, plug it in where you've got a blue light on the receiver on the handlebars you're good to go um, you can actually see by just holding your hand underneath so yeah you'd be good to go I mean this is all in theory and for me it works but I need to be able to put it out there so that people would know how to use it And if they really want one because it's a little bit complicated right so we've got our theory done we're going to apply that setting say okay okay there now we have to go where if I use GP bikes now 
I wouldn't have a problem. I could, I'd go into GP Bikes, I'd calibrate it, which I will show you. Um, I don't think I could go to a milestone game and do it, but it's, it's really simple. I'm gonna show you the principle of how you make it set up for the milestone games that you'd have body motion even in modded GP 21, 22, uh, Ride 4, Isle of Man TT. You can use this unit in any of those um, just by using X360, which I'm gonna start up now. All right, so there she is. Now, what I'm gonna do is generally, uh, I think in games, like I said, I, they used the right thumbstick. I'm going to actually set. Um, where is it? Okay, so my X axis. So if I want to set the right stick, I'm going to record it. The Y is that. Then. I want to record that it's gonna be I've got to do it um, okay I've got to think about that that way yeah so now you can see there's a little cross right in the middle here and if I move my body motion unit it's gonna do exactly what that thumbstick would do and then what I can do is I can go here I can give it a dead zone, I can give it an anti-dead zone, I can make it more sensitive, less sensitive. So once you're calibrated, you can actually change the way that your body leans just by using X360. Same with your brakes, your throttle, everything. The way I've designed my system is that you can do adjustments that you cannot do in any game whatsoever. But using this in X360, you can. So yeah, I'm kind of proud of myself. Right, okay, so now, I think the next thing I need to do is shut this down. And I need to do a demo. <laughs> so we're gonna go GP bikes. Right, somewhere I've got steam. And we're at GP Bikes. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna do VR right now. And the one beautiful thing about this is when you use VR and the body motion unit, you're not only using your body to actually control the bike a bit differently, but you've also got the full freedom of your look with the VR unit. So you're really using your body. And this is the pop. Oh, excuse me. You're using your body. So when it comes to like um, practicing, training, you're actually using your body as you would if you're on a real bike. So you, you'll learn how your body movement affects a motorcycle. <laughs> if you lean it over and you go like that, you'll see that the bike is literally gonna like crash. You know, okay, um, I'm not gonna bother about what bike I've got, anything like that. The thing I have to do is I have to go into inputs now. And basically what you have to do again is calibrate again. Now this is only GP bikes. And this is the beauty of GP bikes. You need your base calibration in Windows. And that you can use with any game. But GP Bikes allows you to also calibrate in GP Bikes so you can play around. For me, I can play with my brakes depending on how, how much pressure I put because my brakes are hydraulic. They work through pressure, not through a movement. So I can actually tune my brakes to be sharper or not so sharp. So I, I can do the strength of my brakes purely by how I calibrate and that is just I love it <laughs> I love it thank you Pavoso right so now I'm going to calibrate my system 
Ah, uh, right. Um, where are we? It didn't go to calibrate, why not? It's not recognising my system. Okay, I've just updated. Okay. I've just updated my GB bikes. Um, it's not recognising the controller, why? Houston, we've got a problem. What the bloody hell is going on? It's plugged in. It's in my computer. Play GP Bikes. Yes, play. That'll be the first time I've seen GP Bikes not accept a controller. That is... Pressing calibration, it's not going there. Okay, I've really got a problem now. I can't do the demo I want because GP Bikes is not actually working. I can't believe that. Okay, there is a problem with GP bikes and that's going to be from the Boso because I just, I can't understand that. I've never, ever had that. Ooh, weird. Oh. I made a mistake, damn it. I didn't start X360. This video is turning into a fiasco. Right, so <laughs> Being with my second bout of COVID, I'm surprised I even managed to go this far. So the program's not going to recognize the system because I didn't start X360. Like an idiot. Because I am now really flustered as to... Right, I'm going to kick that over there. Make sure I've got all my settings. Restart. But Steam's recently unable to sync. Yeah, play anyway. I don't care. Didn't say that last time. Why the hell did GP Bikes not recognise the controller? Or is it because they got a Steam problem right now? So I've just come up with a ride four error, and that's a Steam two. Ah. <laughs> Great, we might have a problem with Steam. And I, oh yeah. Okay, control is recognized. Options, controls, configuration. Um, Where's Ryder? Oh, what? I thought this had Ryder movement. Oh, wait, is that weight forward? Weight back. Ooh. Well, it doesn't have left and it doesn't have lean left, right and lean left, but I think this is the up. So lean forward. Oh, what have I got to do to change it? A, change binding. A. I pressed it. Something sticking. Oh, wait. Oh, that bloody idiot. That's 
<laughs> I got it stuck on. Um, I got it stuck on. Yeah, it's supposed to be on controller. Dumbass. Wait forward. Wait forward. Why is that not working? Oh, it's not working on here. Oh, bollocks. Right, I screwed that up, didn't I? I just turned off. X360. <laughs> I've totally lost my mouse now. You have to bear with me, people, but I think I turned off X360. And for some reason, the body motion unit is not working. Everything else is working, but the body motion unit has stopped. Right, the body motion unit is not sending. It's on. Okay. Oh no, I've got to record it there. Body motion unit stopped working. I'm going to keep at this. I don't know what's going on right now. So. The light's on. I'm going to disconnect this. I don't know if I've done something. I've got a feeling. Because GP Bytes didn't accept it. And Steam's given me two errors. I'm wondering if Steam server's been given a problem. showing that it's working. I made that brake way too strong, that rear brake. Right, so everything's working. So why? <laughs> right, I turned steam off, didn't I? Um, start steam, XD60. There is a flickering, X360 is flickering. There's a conflict. There was a conflict between Axis A1. I had it on there because I tried to change it. Oh shit. X. Oh, I've got to restart this. I've cocked up my uh, 
the axis, that's all. Right, so the axes are working. You can see it can be a pain to use. Ah, I do know why. I have also, and this is nothing to do with this, it's to do with It's to do with Isle of Man. I had the, that set up for something totally different. I totally forgot to turn that down. So effectively my handlebars had a, a zero dead zone. So if there was a slight movement, it was causing problems with other inputs. So I'd obviously confused the system. I'm very sorry about that people. I hope you stuck with me. You will need to. Okay. <laughs> and the funny thing is although I've got analog clutch analog rear brake I've got them on the right and left stick press but because of the way the F360 works it actually functions analog not button press so that's one point. Oh, are we actually gonna get somewhere? I mean, it's like, oh, and of course I had all that covered. I'm very sorry, people. Right, let's try and get through. Oh, this is not the easiest thing to do on your own. Now I'm just going to hope body motion unit is still working. Nope, it's stopped. So I have got a problem with... No, nope, as soon as I start steam, it's killed it. So steam is actually causing me a conflict. It's really weird. Uh, see, it moves very slowly. I'm watching it off screen, so. I've all of a sudden got a conflict with steam. This is not good. Everything else is working perfectly, but the communication now from this has suddenly changed because I'm in ride. So I think there's something that's got conflict. This is the point of, you know, testing things with people. Why is that suddenly stopped when I start steam? Everything else on the controls is working perfect. Right, I'm going to try two tests and then I might have to stop this video. But See, now it's letting me calibrate. One, two. Oh, I need to <coughs> turn off X360. Now I've made GB bytes crash. Yeah, because I had X360 on the start of GP Bytes and you can't use X360. All right. This is turning into quite a dilemma.
Haven't even shown the harness yet. Holy shit. GP bikes won't start without X360. You won't let me calibrate. If it both so hasn't gone that way, surely. If I had X360, it would fucking recognize it. That is not... Okay, so I think this is boiling down to a Steam error. I think Steam somewhere has really screwed things up for me. I can't believe that I'd have to start X360 to set my controller up in GB Bikes. You gotta be shitting me. GP Bikes is not recognizing my controller after the last update. Okay, people, I'm, I'm really sorry about this, but this is actually a very, very serious thing. I was hoping to really show you a lot more about the body motion. I'm going to keep this on, but I am going to quickly show you we're going to try with this, but I do have the harness. We're going to try this, but it seems huh, that Piboso suddenly um, is not accepting normal bloody controllers. And it was the only one that did. I'm flabbergasted. Now I've got to do Well what I'm gonna do is oh shit. I've got to calibrate everything, okay. It's not even picked up the clutch. Rear brake. It's going totally screwy. I didn't flick through them. What the hell is this? This is all cocked up. I'm sorry people, I'm going to keep this live because I, I want to be able to actually show someone what the hell is going on. This is crazy.
and it doesn't matter what else I do, it's not clearing out. So, I can't get anything to run right now. I've been up, I've had two steam errors come up. So is there a problem with steam? What's going on? Right. I'm going to go on another thing. Good. In some way or another. Which I haven't had until date. I've not had one system go down. I'm going to keep it on though. I'm not going to like close off and go, oh no, damn. I don't know if it's this. That's off. <laughs> Try and do this while I'm blind. Oh. Right, unplugged. These are all the teething points of producing something. But it is kind of embarrassing. But I'm not going to dump the video. Right. So everything else is working, fine as it was. But the only thing that that box is doing is doing two axes. No, it's not my system. I've disconnected the unit and it is GP Bikes. Huh. So. This is going to be a to be continued video, but maybe this will show people uh, there's something going on. I'm going to start X360. Right. X360 is up. Leave it up. Press play. Play GB bikes. I'm glad I didn't do it in VR. Settings. Calibration. You see, now I can go to calibration. Clutch is still not working. <laughs> see? Now, at RX and RY, couldn't use those before. They're off. There is a massive problem, I think, with Steam. Because my system is working. So, people, I'm literally. bigger so seriously um, I think you've just seen on the end of that I updated GP bikes which now unfortunately has to be on Steam which I hate um, and there is obviously an error because it's um, causing conflicts. Because now it won't even let me set my system up in GB bikes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Sorry, I was, I'm thinking what to do. So people, I'm gonna have to leave it there. And basically, um, I'm gonna put, post the video so people can see. There's nothing I can do. GP bikes, for the first time ever, will not recognize my system. All the analogs are totally screwed up, except for three. Um, Steam has been given errors, and for Ride 4, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to sign off and say thank you very much for watching. Sorry it's ended up being tedious and boring. There will be a follow-up to this, and I won't make it so tedious. It will basically be riding. Um, and an explanation as to, yeah, what the cause was. But watch this space. Thank you very much, and uh, keep yourselves healthy and safe. I will see you soon. Thank you.